What's up everyone, Thrall Smell here once again. I'm the Croc Nick, and I have another album review for you. So we did say there was going to be a bit of a death metal theme for this week's batch of reviews, and we're going to continue on with that theme with the newest offering from Vomit the Soul, Cold. This also comes out on the 12th of November on Unique Leader Records. This band formed in 2000 in Italy. This is their third full length. Yes, they are named after the awesome song by Cannibal Corpse. And this band is... I would say brutal death metal. They also say slam though. Well, I'm not really a fan of slam, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's brutal death metal because honestly, it feels more like brutal death metal to me. I actually have their debut Portraits of Inhuman Abominations and honestly, I guess that one felt more like a slam album to me. The production was definitely more raw. It had that plunky snare that I don't like, but this feels, I don't know, a little bit more along the lines of brutal death metal and a bit tighter in terms of the production. And you get that pretty much right from the very first second this album starts. There's no pretense, no bullshit. This just opens up with absolutely suffocating brutal death metal. And I think that kind of has something to do with the production here. The production here is just ungodly heavy. Like everything out front, the guitar tone is just chunkier than hell. The drums are fucking just relentless. And even the bass is pretty prominent in the mix. This is just so blast beat forward and then like nice pockets of groove and then sort of slam riffs here. And it's just designed to just pummel the living shit out of you. Within the first 10 seconds, within the first 10 seconds, this album is already just in your face, growling its guts out. If you're a fan of bands like Dying Fetus, Skinless, Disgorge, uh, US version, or Gorgasm, this is gonna feel right at home for you. It is absolutely pummeling. And my God, like guitar work on here, it's kind of similar from track to track, I'll be honest, but I love the intensity. Everything is very like palm muted, very chuggy. You get trauma riffs that are kind of used more as accents, I guess, like they're throwing out like a little bit of a tag at the end of the riff, but most of the time it is just chunky as hell and just sort of driving these big nasty grooves and then into just pummeling blast beats. This band has a pretty distinct formula and it's all designed to hurt you. And this is pretty much describable for every single song on here because there really aren't a lot of melodic breaks on here at all. The song Unchained from the Reflection starts off with a giant head smashing, not head banging. That's the kind of groove this is, is a head smashing kind of groove big slam riffs and then into what I would call tremolo and fucking triplet warfare. Loads of just aggression right out front. Again, it's just so fucking intense and it does not give you a second to breathe. You might get like a second in between tracks just to catch your breath, but in terms of like lead up and anything like that, they really don't even like isolate a lot of riffs or anything to kind of lead in. Like it just goes from the very second the song starts, like everyone in, all of them are at 10. Fuck it, why not 11? Just because it's brutal. And they're off to play the most intense thing they possibly can. Now this pretty much does stick to kind of that brutal death formula, you know, big slam breaks, blast beats, deep guttural vocals, occasional pig squeals. I don't like the pig squeals, I've never been a fan, but they're only peppered in here a little bit. They're not the predominant vocal style in here. Mostly it's a very John Gallagher style vocal kind of burp slash growl. It's almost kind of a burp, but it's actually used pretty effectively. And you know, the rhythm is kind of the cool thing because often they're kind of syncopated with the big slam chugs and such. And I think that's just kind of a fun thing. Just another thing for you to head bang along or head smash. We'll just keep going at that because that feels even more appropriate. Now when it comes down to the more slam moments, I would say Unchained from the Reflection and possibly uh, Wordless Litany kind of have some more distinct slam moments on there, maybe a little bit in Lost Aria. But for the most part, this kind of just stays more on the brutal death metal side. The riffing feels way more along the lines of brutal death metal. And when it comes to like making these songs stand out, that is kind of an issue on here because a lot of this is just densely compact and it's just riff a second. Like you don't get any breathers again. This is like the musical equivalent of being stuck in an elevator with a fuck ton of feral pigs. And yeah, I mean, the elevator's either gonna fall because 
Again, there's a lot of pegs, man. It's definitely gonna fall with me because, you know, I'm kind of chubby. Or, you know, you just get mauled to death. And uh, either way, it sounds like a horrible way to die. But yeah, it's just so densely compact with violence. So finding moments to like get some real breathers or some real dynamics to make songs stand out was kind of an issue on here. But songs like Prelude to Nothing and Deprivation of the Soul really bring out some killer songwriting, especially Prelude to Nothing. For some odd reason, that song really stood out to me. It has all the elements that every other song on here has, you know, the brutal death metal chugs and slams and riffs, but the way it's paced and I don't know, it just feels different because I think they let riffs breathe a little bit. They kind of carry on with them a little bit, and I think there's just some more dynamics on it. Uh, vocal patterns are a little bit different. There's these really cool sections where they kind of just let the bass kind of just do some noodles in between the breakdown riff towards the end. That song has instant memorable hooks, and that is something that is kind of missing on here because, again, you are just greeted to wall-to-wall -wall riffs. So it's kind of hard to latch on to a lot of the stuff, but it's one of those, if you like brutal death metal, there's a good chance you're gonna like pretty much all the elements that are going into this. And Deprivation of the Soul has these really cool, kind of catchy crawling riffs to begin with, and the last like minute and a half of that is one breakdown that is just absolutely heavier than hell, but it has a really cool distinct hook to it, and they carry that thing on for a while. And again, bringing up the bass, there are some really cool bass accents in there, which most of the time the bass is just kind of dominated by how heavy the fucking guitars are. But when you actually hear it, he's doing some really cool shit. And there is a lot of really cool, like, technical play on here, but mostly it's just in straightforward, just brutal death metal riffing. It's kind of the, the speed and the precision of everything. Same thing with the drum work. The drum work is intense. This dude is a blast beat machine. And honestly, I kind of like that the plunkiness, that kind of slam snare has been dialed back a little bit. It still gets a little loud in some of the faster parts, but for the most part, it's at a tolerable level, at least for non-slam enthusiasts like me. So that makes it slam that I can actually get into. And while searching for melody and brutal death metal might be, for the most part, a fruitless endeavor just because it's brutal death metal, it's supposed to be brutal as hell. Melody is not completely, you know, absent on this. The Lost Aurea actually has some really the distinct catchy melodies. There's kind of this cool, like, quasi-melodic breakdown. I mean, it's melodic for literally everything else on the album. Like, it's not you know, as brutal as everything else, but it does offer just a little bit something different here, which, again, was kind of the issue. Again, suffocatingly heavy. Like, it is so damn relentless, but it kind of lacks a lot of distinct hooks and stuff to make the songs stand out. As one continuous brutal listen, it's pretty damn amazing just in terms of if you want brutality, just raw and in your face at all times. It has a very distinct formula. The riffing is kind of similar from song to song. There's not a lot of riffs that really stand out from other songs just in terms of different things they're doing, but they're solid riffs and they're kind of the backbone of brutal death metal. So I can't necessarily fault them there. It's just sort of a matter of preference. I would like some of these songs to stand out. I brought up comparisons to Dying Fetus and Skinless and so on. I think those bands actually throw out a lot of different dynamics to break up the songs. Dying Fetus definitely has a distinct sound, but you know the interesting melodies that uh, John Gallagher comes up with on guitar, just to sort of break it up a little bit from just the relentless riffing, that kind of spices it up. And you know, even he said his formula is brutality, but with hooks. This has the brutality. It has some of the hooks. I think I'd like to hear a little bit more, but honestly, from their debut to this, I didn't pick up their second album. I see progression. I see them actually branching out a little bit more. It's just, you know, they have one thing they like to do a lot and some other stuff they don't do as much, but they also do really well. I just like to see them kind of broaden up the sound a little bit. But overall, this was a pretty decent listen, and I'm not the biggest Slam fan, and Brutal Death I'm kind of picky on, but I thought this was pretty good. So overall, I'm gonna give this three stars. This is a pretty solid album. It kind of does one thing really well. It's just I kind of got tired of the one thing just because shit started running together too much. But when they really opened up again, Prelude to Nothing is a flat out banger of a song. I will definitely be listening to that again. Same thing with Deprivation of the Soul. Great songs. I just think I'd like to hear more of what those songs brought 
on the rest of the album just in terms of varying it up because again as one continuous listen and this is a little bit over a half an hour this will pummel you to death it is so fucking heavy but i feel like heavy is kind of the easy part you can kind of create that tone it's it creating the hooks creating the brutality and the hooks at the same time they definitely can do it because i definitely heard it on here i just think they need to do it a bit more just to make the songs stand out but again if you're a brutal death metal fan and a slam fan and you're just looking for something that is skull smashing fucking heavy this is it i strongly recommend checking this out i'm definitely gonna pick up a copy too i definitely want to spend some more time with this probably get their second album too but uh yeah insanely brutal music if you love that go get this so, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out, there will be a link down below. We also have shirts available. If you would like one, hit us up on thrallsofmetal at gmail.com. Send us a message, put shirts in it, and we will get back to you and hopefully sell you a shirt. So with that, I thank you all, because you all fucking rule, and we will catch you later.